station. Or right. Probably. Of course. Many. Of course. Like, yeah. 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 Store, Joe, we're all oh. set and ready to go. Okay. Thank you. All right, we will call to order this planning commission meeting for the city of Bowling Green, Ohio for February of 2024. Um, Jamie, will you call the roll? Mr. Bowden? Ms. Broadwell? Here. Ms. Ennis? Mr. McComba? Mr. Phillips? Here. Mr. Remus? Here. Ms. Sleek? Here. Mr. Stittler? Here. And Mr. Stalter? Here. Okay. Um, at this time, we will open up uh, lobby visitation, and this is where anybody from the public can come address the Planning Commission on any item not on our agenda for the night. Is there anybody that would like to speak to the Planning Commission? We should probably approve the minutes first, maybe. Or does it matter what order we go in? We can approve those minutes. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm just saying, Joe. Just, like, I missed it. Sorry. <laughs> So moved, yes. No second. Does anybody have any uh, changes to the minutes from December? Oh. No takers. They're approved as noted. <laughs> now we can do lobby visitation. <laughs> Seeing as I didn't see any motion before, I assume we have no takers. And seeing none, we will close lobby visitation. <clears throat> Uh, our first item up is an annexation request uh, for 1.934 acres located at 12821 Nims Road, parcel number C11-511-707-0700-0001. And 17670 North Dixie Highway, parcel number C11 dash five eleven dash zero seven zero 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 one two zero 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 and seventeen seven oh eight North Dixie Highway parcel number C eleven dash five eleven dash zero seven zero 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 one one zero 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 from Center Township Kurt R. Davis agent on behalf of Abbott Laboratories petitioner. Heather, do we have any rundown on this one? Sure, I really don't have much to add, except this is part of the um, Abbott La um, Laboratories parcel that they had purchased, and they ended up buying these parcels later on. And of course, we'd like it all to be in the city also, and um, that is why we're here with this petition. It is a recommendation to city council, so you don't actually vote on this, but at least you know give that recommendation to council that we pass on to them. Is there anybody have any questions on this one or any comment? My only comment would be that it all makes sense. Yep, yeah, me as well. Um, we have a move for a vote to recommend to city council on this. Second. Mm -hmm. Jamie? Ms. Broadwell? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Remus? Yes. Ms. Sleek? Yes. Mr. Stittler? Yes. And Mr. Stalter? Yes. Okay. Request passes. Um, on to the next item, which be the interim zoning for the 1.934, <laughs> give or take, acres located at the three aforementioned properties. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. Kurt R. Davis, agent on behalf of Abbott Laboratories, petitioner. Heather, do we have uh, a recommendation? Sure. Well, as far as the zoning code, I am required to recommend the closest zoning that it's currently zoned in Center Township. So you probably read over my memo. So essentially, the one parcel is zoned A1 Agricultural, which is the same classification we have. The other two parcels around, you know, along North Dixie Highway are actually zoned C3 Highway Commercial. We do have a similar classification of IC Interstate Commerce um, or any other commercial district really would work. Um, but in this case, you also are allowed as a planning commission to re basically recommend what you want um, with the various considerations under section 150.112. Um, in this case, the large parcel owned by Abbott is IE, Innovation and Employment. So, um, you know, it probably makes sense to do the IE, but again, I can't recommend that, but it is up to planning commission to recommend that to council. Okay. Um, it seems like it would make sense to um, zone this similar to the other properties. 
adjacent to it. Was there a request in the um, from Abbott in uh, their application? No, there is no specific request really as part of an annexation petition. Um, sometimes people will reach out to us by an email or later on if they have any um, specific needs of a vacant parcel, but in this case, I think there was some assumptions made that it already is, i.e. the majority of the property, so it would make sense to match that large parcel that's over 130 acres. Okay. Well, I think it would make sense to um, recommend uh, the innovation and employment um, classification for these properties. Um, have a motion. I'll move. So moved. Second. All right. We'll put it to a vote then. Uh, Jamie. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Remus. Yes. Ms. Sleek. Yes. Mr. Spitler. Yes. Mr. Stalter. Yes. And Ms. Broadwell. Yes. Okay. So recommended. Um, the next item for uh, is a subdivision, a preliminary plan for a Toussaint Springs subdivision located at the southwest corner of Brim Road and Newton Road, as identified as parcel numbers B08-510-13010, and B08-510-26. 00000001502. Heather? Sure, absolutely. So you may recall we had these two parcels um, up on your agenda for rezoning earlier last year, and obviously that was approved, and they moved forward with um, their preliminary plan. We've been working with them for several months to really get um, the layout right. I know there's a big county ditch that runs west to east on the site, so it made it a little bit challenging to make that all work with the required easement for that ditch maintenance um, through the Ohio, Ohio Revised Code. Um, but here we are, we've had staff review the plan and give their approval. So we're at that point where we're ready to bring that to Planning Commission. Um, as far as the actual subdivision, they're proposing 123 parcels, which we gave you a copy of that preliminary plan. I think I also can bring it up here on the screen. Probably not as easy to read there, but at least it gives you an idea of that layout. Um, so it is zoned R2 under the new zoning code, um, and their lot sizes actually are a little bit larger than the minimum R2, and um, the setbacks are a little larger than, again, the minimums in R2. But um, again, we have it at our finalized stage to you. And in addition to that, there are no waiver requests. So um, it's good to go from a staff stamp standpoint. Now, this won't be the last time you see this. After preliminary layout is approved, then they go back and do their construction plans as far as the developer and the engineering firm. And then they're resubmitted to city staff. And that's really you know, the, the bones of the subdivision, so getting the infrastructure right and meeting the city specifications. And then once uh, staff approves those construction plans, then and normally a developer and um, their subcontractors go in and actually put in the infrastructure. And then at that point, when they're a little closer to finalizing the construction, they come back to um, the city with the final plat, staff reviews it again, and then once we're all good with the subdivision regulations again, then we submit that to Planning Commission for your final approval, and upon that approval, it would get recorded. So we still have a bit of time, but you know, this is the first step to getting a subdivision going. So that's pretty much it, unless you have any specific questions in general for me. And I do believe we have our um, representatives here from Triban and then their engineering firm, if you have any questions for them too. Uh, I have a question. Like, this is huge. Where are you? Over there? This is like really huge. Do you have like potential tenants already? Please. Um, yes, yeah, we have entered into a contract with K. Havanian Homes, which we have uh, a relationship with as a national builder throughout Northeast Ohio, which we do subdivisions as well. We're currently doing one in Lake County on the east side of town, which is a hundred and roughly 30 homes, uh, basically a mere project of this. Um, and just for takedown schedule wise, um, to let you know, we basically finished up uh, a little over a year ago and they currently are over 40 units in process. 
So uh, being a national entity, they bring a big driver and presence that they do studies of the areas, mm -hmm. know what the public would like to see and what will sell. Mm -hmm. um, we want to come and be a big success. Um, we, we, were, we were grateful to be part of, of this process and be considered for it in your guys' town. Um, we see a lot of great things going on here and would like to be here more than just this project. Uh, as long as uh, K of N does as well, um, they actually had a build on your lot program where they did roughly about 15 um, homes a year, which was, um, you know, homeowners with properties would come to them. And they have since, um, I don't want to say shut it down, but they have moved their their program to uh, a platform of subdivisions now on a larger level. So um, they're being a pre bringing a presence to the area as well. Um, and a lot of good things to come. Fun. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Sound good. Hmm. Good. <clears throat> All right. I don't have any real concerns on this one, so I don't. Seems as though I'll move to vote. I'll second. Second. Mm -hmm. All right, Jamie. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Remus? Yes. Ms. Sleek? Yes. Mr. Spittler? Yes. Mr. Stalter? Yes. And Ms. Broadwell? Yes. Okay, this motion passes. Okay, the next item on it is reports from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Judy's not here today. Um, Heather, will you be going over that or are we just gonna do your report from the Planning Department? I will do my report. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so I have a pretty brief monthly report since, you know, we're not too far into the year 2024, but so far we've had 16 zoning permits compared to 13 at this time last year. We've had four single family housing starts compared to two at this time last year. Um, as far as commercial industrial projects, um, as of our last time we've met, we have issued the Applebee's permit, which will be located at 1175 South Main Street. And then we have permits on hold or under review, which is Ag Pro Edition at 829 West Newton Road, uh, Quip Quick Trip New Construction at the southeast corner of East Wooster and Dunbridge, and Precision Alloy, which is um, an industrial property, um, doing an addition they've applied for at 726 Innovative Drive. Um, as far as subdivisions, we have a replat of the Interstate Commerce subdivision. Staff comments have been provided. We're waiting on their um, return of the updated plans. Um, construction plan for Kogan's Crossing Plat 9 expansion, which was approved in December. They have started their infrastructure work on expanding that street and connecting it from Wexford Drive to um, the uh, road, I think it's Longford, if I'm remembering right. Uh, construction plan for Stone Ridge Plat 9, not confusing at all that they're both Plat 9, by the way. Um, staff comments have been provided and they are eager to get their construction plans um, done and then infrastructure, infrastructure started on that project very soon. And then extraction plan for Wood Acres, which was an institutional subdivision, a little different. Um, the staff is reviewing an updated set of plans and we anticipate approving those very quickly also so they can start their construction. As far as um, community action plan, the East Booster plan, land use plan, we've made some significant process, um, progress, especially since our zoning code approval, which you'll see in our annual report. Um, but we actually are updating our access management policies and guidelines. We started doing that um, late last year. And our subdivision regulations, we hope to do those soon too, but we just have so much going on right now. It is slated for um, to start at some point this year. Um, as far as some additional items that we do in our office, we did have to submit our boundary changes to the census. I know that kind of doesn't sound very exciting, but it's something we, that's really important every year to get a good count of our community as that 10-year census comes up. Um, Bowling Green City Council, I thought you should know, adopted a plan for the Safe Routes to School program. And um, again, I'm going to go over briefly the annual report, um, which it takes us a significant amount of time to get this report together because we do try to give you a snapshot of all the activities of the office for a year. And it's really a good exercise for us to really, you know, kind of look back and see the progress that we've made with, you know, not only internally, but also with our boards and commissions. 
So what we do is we give you a summary of all the zoning permit types, um, the totals, and so you can also compare 22 to 23. So you will see that we were down this year um, a little under 10% with permits. I don't think it's really surprising because, again, of inflation. You know, things are very costly right now, um, supply chain issues, and um, I don't know. I think 2024 might be a little bit of a stronger year as people sort of bounce back, but um, housing starts working we're up from 22 in 2022 to 29 in 2023. So that kind of was something that I would say we could highlight. Um, also, we give you some pictures of the new housing starts and a map so you can see a list of all those addresses around the city and, again, just some examples of pictures. Uh, we give you also some highlights of commercial industrial additions and alterations to um, facilities and, um, of course, the addresses. Then we give you um, new construction. We did not have any new industry this year, but we did have um, new commercial permits, and I mentioned a few of those earlier. And then we also give you zoning compliance permits because it's kind of interesting to see the different building, you know, different change in uses and um, people that move into some vacant buildings around town. And then we give you information as far as the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's really good to track their activities so we know what kind of variances are being requested and if we have any sort of pattern of variances. If you have a category that has a lot of variances, that usually gives you an indication that maybe you need to relook at a certain section of your zoning code, that it might need some tweaks. But since ours is brand new, you know, we went down a little bit in variances. So um, we're at 25 variances for 2023 compared to 31 in 2022. Uh, we had four denied and a majority at 21 were approved. Um, Planning Commission, I probably shouldn't even have to report on that one. You all remember 2023. Um, but we had exactly the same amount of requests in 23 as we did in 22, so at 16. And um, I think we'll probably be even busier this year. We'll see how it goes, but it's looking very busy. So Historic Preservation Commission, um, they've been extremely busy. I won't read all their activities. I try to keep you up on those because they do at some point come in front of you for um, and a, rec a recommendation. So I anticipate you'll probably see some more activities come your way this year. But um, again, they did a lot of activities. And um, code enforcement, that's always a very active um, division in the planning department. We do have one code enforcement officer. So I give you a summary of the various um, complaints he gets, uh, warnings and citations um, by type. And then of course, there's the um, rental and self inspect rental registration and self inspection program. So we give you an idea of some of those uh, numbers that we dealt with in 2023. And then a little write-up of those activities and how they've operated with the process. Um, also, we, we help deal with the downtown permits. So those are approvals to be on the sidewalk, whether it be A-frame signs, outdoor dining, and merchandise display. We also, um, JB in particular, sends out new resident newsletters to um, folks that we see in the paper that have bought new homes here. And we do focus on um, you know, all the amenities in the city that we think that people really don't know about. So it's kind of a, maybe kind of a strange thing we do in the planning department, but I think it's been very valuable to get um, people new to the community this information. Um, we also had our communications department redesign the newsletter. So you'll see a snapshot of that and you can see the full newsletter on the city webpage, but it looks really, really nice. And um, again, we're happy to share all the cool things in Bowling Green. And we also use the transfers to also send the rental program um, letters. So that's why we believe the number went down quite a bit because we're kind of sorting basically what we think is likely a rental property versus getting this new resident letter because it's just a, a lot different um, than the registration. So um, we also issue new addresses in our office and correct addresses and um, deal with address visibility. You know, we assigned over 111 new addresses, which probably, again, doesn't sound exciting, but it's really, really important when you pick up the phone and need to call 911 for something. This software that I have to enter addresses in is really important to keep that updated and that it makes sense. So um, that's another activity. We also hold the contract with the Wood County Health Department and we had um, 215 complaints this year. 128 at the health department were resolved, and a lot of those take a long time because it's not you know, cheap fixes, it's, it's windows, it's roofing, it's siding, it's painting. So I think it's interesting to note that we've had, they've had approximately 70% of the complaints are exterior and a majority are painting. So again, a, a very costly thing to do, and sometimes when you have an older home with older siding, that's a very long, detailed process. 
and then about 20% of the complaints were interior issues, and you know that's pretty low because you have to be basically the owner or the tenant and invite somebody in. The health department's not knocking on you know people's doors to come inside. It's really because they have a complaint. Um, so as far as the health department, they were very busy. I think really pictures do speak a, speak very loudly, and um, I gave you several pictures which were really great to receive from the health department because I know they have a lot on their plate. So to get some good pictures of Bowling Green and the activities they've done is really helpful. So you'll see a lot of examples here of a before and after. You know, there's a detached garage on one page, so you'll see again, you know, what it looked like before, and then they dealt with exterior paint and roof issues, and um, the corrective picture really looks nice. And then we give you examples of some homes that had exterior sanitation issues that have a before and after picture. Again, I think you can see the difference there and just want to show that the health department, you know, is doing, I think, a lot of um, work for us. And it's um, definitely showing results. Uh, gave you a copy of an industrial building where there had some corrections with paint and another house. Again, paint, largest issue there. And then a uh, a tash garage that had a siding issue that was corrected and another garage that had a window and siding issue corrected. And then lastly, an example of a house with um, siding issues that also was fixed. So as far as the um, planning documents in the city, community action plan, future land use plan, you know, it's kind of interesting when we looked at all these plans that to see all the boxes of recommendations that really have been checked off just by doing the zoning code update. And um, that is in more detail at the back of the document. But I also included some various activities of the department. Again, you know, just a lot of training, webinars. That's something that we always keep up on. Um, and then community development, we give you a summary of that division. And it talks a lot about the ARPA funds, you know, making significant you know, progress in housing and housing improvements, the BG transit system, and the amount of um, you know, transit cards that we've issued and the activity of those, how the funding that we get from, you know, it's federal government, so HUD and then state government, ODOT, you know, the amount of work and level of work to be compliant with these programs is really important, but it also makes a difference, again, in our community, which you will see more so in the charts that we provided using the community De development block grant funding and the ARPA projects there in a summary. And you know, it's things like uh, roof replacements, furnace, air conditioning, flooring, door replacement, things that really make a significant difference in a house, not just, you know, I want pretty cupboards. It's really about making a home safe and the sanitation of that home is, is really what we need to um, focus on with our programs. Then we give you a copy of the community impact of the grant programs, kind of broken down by transit, um, the business revolving loan fund, um, the housing vouchers that we help with the Salvation Army to house somebody that potentially is here homeless that we discover, and then um, the income level served by the housing programs and a summary of the housing repair and rehabilitation. And those are really broken down to by um, the, the type. So you'll see that it's very rare to have a program that helps with mobile homes. And we have several mobile home parks or homes here that really do need that help. And um, again, cost of repairs. And as a city, we're really proud that we're able to do that for families. And um, again, it's kind of a rare program that we have to be able to do that. So again, more pictures. So you'll see a um, couple examples of photos photos of ARPA projects. So that funding was used. You know, it, again, it's the same type of um, help we can give for that program, but the income levels are a little bit higher, so we can capture more households just kind of on that brink of not being able to meet that low income threshold. So you'll see just being able to do windows on a home, you know, is a significant project that, um, again, not only changes the appearance of a home, but also, you know, the energy efficiency. So very proud of that. And again, those pictures are really exciting to see the before and after. And then we have examples of before and after of the CDBG projects. Again, you'll see some significant damage of subflooring, you know, that's rotting and uh, to a totally re remodeled bathroom where somebody who has a disability is able to access their shower where they could not before. So again, really important projects and um, great results that I think we've had with both programs. And that's summarized as far as even locations. On page 24, the map of the CDBG and ARPA projects. So you'll see, you know, it's not just on the east side or west side, it's all over town where these projects are happening. So I think it's important to illustrate that they're really touching, you know, really all uh, facets, all wards of the city. 
And so last but not least, uh, basically what I do is take the recommendations of our land use plan back from 2014 and then the community action plan. And I like to give just an update of you know, from 2023, you know, what, what progress have we made and what's done now? And it was kind of interesting going back and forth with the zoning code update that when it comes to the actual community action plan, we, um, let me look at my page here. We accomplished 17 recommendations by updating the zoning code. So a significant amount of recommendations from the community action plan were completed by that project. So, and we all know that was a long project, a very um, deep, deep, deep dive in our zoning code happened. And so it's definitely significant. And I think it's made a huge difference so far. And additionally, the future land use plan, um, we actually, I think, let's see here, the number we fulfilled eight recommendations of the plan with that zoning code update. So really exciting. We're at the point where I think I said before that that plan is 10 years old already. And, but you know, we've done a lot. Look at the East Wooster corridor. You know, we didn't just blink and that happened, right? It was, it was you know, this important planning document and um, funding and getting everybody, to, all the stakeholders together, having a plan and then implementing the plan. So. Devil is in the details, but plans can come to fruition if you all work together and have the engagement we need and the buy-in. So I'm sorry, maybe that was a little longer than I anticipated, but um, I just wanted to share that with you. And if you have any questions, happy to answer those. I just have one question. Um, in the paperwork, it said something about the city's working with partners to participate with safe routes to schools and the design of the trail with cost estimates. This is just phase one, it says, right? The CRIM? the safe routes to school? Yeah, I believe that's one component of it, but I think that it was even started before the safe routes to schools. So it'll be a lot of different projects into that plan, but you have to have a plan to be able to apply for the funding. Gotcha. Okay. I just have a question, and I apologize, I can't remember where I saw this, but there's somewhere now where you can report something online, because I'm always making phone calls and stuff. Can you? Yes. But I can't remember now where I saw that I will email it to you. It's on the city webpage. It's on the city webpage. Yes. Okay, that's mm -hmm. all I need to know. I can't remember where I saw that that's now available, but I think that's a great idea yes. because sometimes you spend three and four times calling around just trying to find out who should, you should report something to. So. Just call Jamie. She knows everything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but yes, yes, it's definitely a great tool, and um, it's, I think it's report a concern is how we title it on the webpage. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Heather. It's a wonderful report. Um, a lot of good work in there, too. So um, with that, I think we've concluded everything we need to get done on the agenda today. Um, I will move to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.